Hey people, Positive Paul. Here we are on Monday, August 7th, 2023. And we will begin to attempt once again to unravel the mystery of what is known as the Montauk Project. And with that being said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for giving me this opportunity once again to share this information for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. And the hope is that you will come away with a better understanding on whether or not the global population is subject to some sort of mind control and whatever the method may be. But more importantly, where, where really are these Machiavellian monsters, these intellectual barbarians, these sad sack Satanists, where do they really focus their attention and who are they worried about the most? That, hey, maybe we need to mind control these individuals to try to shut them up. So there's real no way to begin these videos. A lot of this, um, I'll be repetitive and there will be some new things I will add. I haven't done one of these in a long time, well over a year. I might have done, you know, some really quick videos, but if this goes up into an hour, I will just cut it off. So let, let's just start this way. Where is Montauk? Now, Montauk is located in New York, more specifically Long Island, New York, all the way on the eastern tip, right where you see my pencil pointing at, is where Montauk Point is. And this becomes the crux of the problem. Now, what I want to do is just quickly go over some details in relation to me and my family and how they fit into this picture. But more importantly, we see where Montauk Point is, but I do want to point out Plum Island. And I will give you some red meat right off the bat. Now my sellout old man, I had put the screws to him for one last time around 2016. It was during the summer of 2016 when in earnest, these American Nazi Edomite Satanists had started up their stalking, harassment, slander campaign against me, first up in San Diego, and then it was brought down to where I'm at in Rosarito Beach, Mexico. But again, I want to repeat that this has nothing to do with Mexico per se, it's only because I'm here because my son's mother is from here. She's Mexican. So this is how I ended up here. And there's reasons why I am here. But with that being said, what I want to do is, you know, when I put the screws to my old man, he had screamed in anguish to make it stop. But before that, he had let the cat out of the bag, meaning this, um, well, at the time he was, I guess, I don't know, 78, 79. He had mentioned Plum Island. And the whole time I had been, you know, stating Montauk, Montauk. But he, for some reason, he mentioned Plum Island. Now, this this could actually, it could mean nothing, but we do know that, and this is what I will state, even though the conspiracy theory states it happened over on Montauk initially and supposedly spread out from there, we really don't know exactly where these experiments these rituals were conducted, but we, we can be for sure that there was time spent out here 
on the eastern tip of Long Island. Now, when we examine Long Island, I want to come right, right here when you get outside of Manhattan, you've got Brooklyn and you've got Queens. Now, here you see Hempstead, New York. All right. Now, in 1868, my great great grandfather, George Linder, fled Bavaria, Germany, and he came to what was known as Washington Square in Long Island, New York, around 1900 maybe. Shortly thereafter, they changed the name to Hempstead. But the point being is, they were one of many families that had immigrated from Germany to the United States. Now, the thing with the families that stayed and ended up in Long Island they were very far and few. So in the late 1860s, this area was nothing but farmland. And there were only seven families that controlled the land in this area, which from Valley Stream, Hempstead, on up. And the one thing that I had asked myself, knowing the history of what was taking place in Germany at the time, uh, the Austro-Hungarian-Prussian uh, War, different dynamics were, were, were taking place, and this was all being uh, initiated by the Jesuits and the Catholics. And there, look, there are stories out there of what really was going on, forcing these families to leave Germany and, who knows, all over Europe. But more specifically, you see this flood of German immigrants arrive in the 1860s. So my family was one of them, and this part of my family history had always been hidden from me. I discovered this on my own through my own research that took took quite a while and the reason why I bring this up and th this is where this becomes an all over the map video so you have to kind of follow along we know concerning MK Ultra Operation Paperclip the individuals the groups that they were mainly concerned with would be those of Germanic ancestry, Celtic ancestry, and Native American ancestry. Now, as time went on, the story goes that all groups were going to be subject to see whether or not they, they could be uh, put through some type of behavioral modification, controlling their behavior, essentially mind controlling an individual. But again, we know Germany seems to be the focus of a lot of um, good or bad. It, it, a lot of it emanates from there. So when you look also... And this is the reason why I'm bringing this up. Right over here is Islip, New York. Now, this is where my father grew up at and went to high school. Now, if we know about the four main players in the Montauk Project, the ones that actually had only four people initially gave birth to this conspiracy meaning Al Bielek, a.k.a. Edward Cameron, Duncan Cameron, Preston Nichols, and Stuart Swerdlow. 
Now, all of them, except, well, no, Al was from Long Island also, I believe, but certainly Preston. And he had stated that he grew up in Islip, New York, and he had lived there for a while. So my father was six years older. He was born in 1940. Preston was born or created in 1946. So, you know, obviously they, they wouldn't have ran into each other. But the point being is my family you know, played a big part in the development of Long Island. So when you look where I come into the picture in November of 1979, we moved from our home base, which was outside of St. Louis, Missouri, in a place called Baldwin, Missouri. And we arrived right up here in a place called Vernon, New Jersey. So, in relationship to Montauk, one could say, you know, close, but this is up in the Appalachian Mountains in a very secluded area and I claim that this would have been one of many holding pens for the individuals that were subject to the original MK Ultra going all the way back to the late 50s through the 60s because what happens is no matter how you found yourself in this situation, on whether, you know, your your parents handed you over to these Satanists and they're all, you know, roped into it, whether you were abducted, you were a my lab, however this worked out, once they've got you fingered and they got their hands on you, they do not go away. And you throughout your childhood during this process will be isolated as best as they can accomplish that. So if anybody has been in this this area of New Jersey, it's the Appalachian Mountains. It's all wooded. Um, it, you know, it's um, very difficult to get around. And if you don't know your way around, you know, you, you can definitely get yourself lost. So the point being is, we know the one thing for certain about the Montauk Project, the key dates and years are from 1980 through 1983, meaning the infamous August 12th, 1983 date, which terminated the so-called Montauk Project. So, what happens is, and what I have claimed, is the individuals that would have been chosen to participate in the next, the continuation of their MK Ultra programming, they would have had to been moved in to this area, what is known as the Tri-State Area. And this could encompass all the way from Philadelphia, going up into Massachusetts, and right here where you see New Haven, where Yale is, this is where Jose Delgado was camped out at for a while. But again, if you were truly part of this at around 1979, if you were in my age group, and we'll go over the criteria of why this is 
that you know I'm gonna be 58 in October so if you were in my age group and you were progressing to this next level of whatever th these Satanists had going on you would have been moved in to a, a, an area around here and you would have been isolated they're not going to stick you in the middle of a, a very highly populated area the point is is you have been slated essentially um i hate to say it you know you you've been slated for death all right you they don't want you to survive this they don't want you to come back and witness and this is where the mystery becomes on why they couldn't kill everybody off okay so there's there's a, a introduction and let's let's try to move along okay if we can folks bear with me now i'm going to hopefully have this sit this video flow in a uh, flow in some kind of order where the listener the viewer can get a sense of how this all comes together so now you know where Montauk is you know where I was placed in November of 1979 Right before the key years of 1980 to August 12th, 83, which is my missing time. And just hold on one second. Now, it was the end of June this year, right before 4th of July. I had made the statement that I'm going to get back in to this Montauk project business. And I further stated that from what I have seen in the past, where if you're an investigator and you're, you're trying to solve a crime, you look for patterns. All right, hold on. 